Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Time Media, and today we've got a brand new review of the new Dead Mouse and Test Pilot EP, Some EP. And before we get going, this video is sponsored by the channel members of this channel, the Bowtie Gang and the Elite Bowtie Society that voted on this video to be done. So if you want to be a part of the voting, you can uh, join channel membership today. But yes, Joel Zimmerman is back with another four-track multi-alias EP that is in true Joel Zimmerman fashion, longer than many albums are. At a hair shy of 33 minutes, the Sum EP is a mixture of classic, progressive Dead Mouse production, as well as the return of Joel's techno alias, Test Pilot. Yes, for those unaware, uh, this is a combined EP between Dead Mouse and Test Pilot, both of which are aliases of Joel Zimmerman. It actually appears that Joel has been on a kind of alias kick in the past year, as we've seen the creation of KX5, a combined alias with Cascade, Rez Mouse, a combined alias with Rez, and now the return of Test Pilot. But for Strictly Joel Zimmerman releases, this is his first solo project in five years now, marking the longest stint of any time since his debut that we've gone from project to project. And even then, Joel decided to make this a combined project between Dead Mouse and Test Pilot, technically two different aliases. Speculation wise, I'm very curious to know what the future holds for both Dead Mouse and any more solo projects coming out in the future, and of course now Test Pilot the return of a different alias. But only time will tell at that end. So hopping along into this EP, we've got a little bit of everything from the creative mind of one Joel Zimmerman. Quetzalcoatl kicks off this EP as both the lead track and the first single of this project. And for diehard Dead Mouse fans like myself, uh, this is pure progressive house bliss. At just 15 seconds in, we are welcomed by the oh-so-familiar Dead Mouse synth. The melody introduces itself, and upon the first listen, I felt like I was being transported back to like early 2010s. With a melody reminiscent of Strobe and a kick straight out of I Remember, everything about this track just screams iconic Dead Mouse. And in true form, this is a masterclass of progression. Part of why I love Dead Mouse and Joel in particular is that the dude just doesn't care about the norms of music industry culture nowadays. On paper, a four track EP that's 33 minutes in length is a death sentence to streaming numbers. Uh, but Joel continually challenges the norms and consistently chooses to do what sounds best for him and what he thinks is best. Part of what makes him so special as a producer is that he just does what he wants to do and that's that. And again, this track, lead single Quetzalcoatl, is no exception to that. The nature of this track really allows Joel to intentionally introduce each new element of the track one by one, highlighting the subtle nuances of the track's sound design and how it all culminates into a grand sort of symphony of house production. This is Dead Mouse at his finest. And then moving right along on the track list is Test Pilot's one and only track, wet. And that title couldn't have been any more perfect. Surely handcrafted by a cacophony of analog synthesizers, the sound design on this track is, well, wet by design. In a year where dark techno is in its golden era, Joel once again proves that he is a step above the competition in terms of mix quality, sound design, and tone. After a fairly linear first half of the track with firm kicks and dense sustains, the song kind of melts into this eerie, anxiety-inducing final movement. With a smattering of sharp piano keys and the ongoing distortion of that once core wet sound established in the first half, the song kind of begins to suffocate the listener. It's actually really quite fear-inducing Scene, and Joel did a great job of setting up that tonal shift from the get-go. He doesn't let that eeriness really ring out for too long as he cuts it all right out before that final drop, only to combine the two together for that outro. It's a pretty neat track, and I love to hear the kind of differences that at least Joel feels between a Dead Mouse and a Test Pilot track. Then we jump into Sever, which is the shortest track of the EP, clocking in at 7 minutes and 7 seconds, which is just a wild sentence to say in 2024. While Sever feels like a good tonal mid-ground between Quetzalcoatl and Wet, it's it's probably the most underwhelming track of the bunch, but it's only due to the greatness of what surrounds it. Taking a more tech house approach to this track, albeit still very progressive, Joel adds some much needed intensity to this track that I think some of the others may lack a little bit. In the grand scheme of this track list, this one does feel like there's less in it to really talk about and or highlight. If anything, this just sounds like a Dead Mouse track. Like if you're not listening to anything and you just now think of what I think Dead Mouse sounds like, it's pretty much severed. Long builds with heavy backing sustains and simple melodies make it a beautiful track, 
but just another addition into the sea of alike sounding tracks from Dead Mouse's discography. And rounding things out is Input Output, which is both the closer to this EP, as well as a tribute song to the late producer Io, who sadly passed away in 2020 due to health complications. And this is a tribute track that really does justice to its inspiration. In fact, Joel does such a great job with this track that even without the knowledge of this being a tribute song, it still sounds very Dead Mouse by design. Well, for those who are informed about the understanding of this track, I feel like this is a proper homage as well. Production-wise, this is yet another long progressive house track that leans heavily into more techno territory, as IO once did, and finding itself just shy of that 10-minute mark in length. The eighth note vocal sampling is core to the IO identity and what makes this one feel like a tribute track, while also doubling as a great kind of key sonic element to differentiate itself from the other tracks here. Holistically, I think this EP is quite marvelous. It feels both like the return of classic Dead Mouse and the exploration of some newer, albeit slight, detours to his repertoire. That being said, I'm not sure this project really warranted the return of the test pilot alias. I recognize the desire for Joel to keep his techno and progressive house separate, but both sever and input-output kind of blur the lines of progressive, electro, and techno enough to the point where test pilot doesn't really feel like a separate entity on this EP. And maybe in the end, that's kind of just praise for his competency in creating a track list of two aliases that don't feel like they clash into another, but in the grand scheme of things, this probably could have just been a purely Dead Mouse project. In the end, though, I think this is a fantastic showing from Joel on either end of his production spectrum. If anything, this EP just reminds me of how much I long for that classic Dead Mouse sound. His ability to craft long, multi-movement tracks that don't get boring is a deeply special skill. That being said, none of these tracks feel like all-timers for his discography. This EP is a definitive showcase of his technical prowess, but will be far from some of his most remembered works, maybe apart from Quetzalcoatl. But in the end, I'm going to score Dead Mouse and Test Pilot some EP at Bowtide 8. Let me know what you guys think of this EP in particular. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on Dead Mouse, Test Pilot, Holistically, the whole EP, maybe one song, maybe all four songs. I'd love to hear any and all thoughts in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.